Filling up your fuel tank might one day start with bacteria. Arizona State University has received a $5.2 million grant from the Department of Energy to research the idea of making fuel from fatty acids harvested from photosynthetic bacterium. Here to help us make sense of all this is Willem Vermas, a professor at ASU School of Life Sciences in the Center for Bioenergy and Photosynthesis. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. Let's talk about this. Bacterium, fatty acids, produces biofuels. How? What um, happens is that you make use of the uh, photosynthesis process that has led to all the fossil fuels in uh, the world that is still responsible for uh, all the food that we eat, essentially. And you're using that natural photosynthesis process, absorbing light, um, using CO2 to be converted into organic uh, compounds. You're then converting those organic compounds into fatty acids which you then have secreted from the bacteria. So essentially what you're doing is you're taking light energy, you take CO2 and you convert it into fatty acids that get converted, that get secreted out of the bacteria and those you uh, harvest. So and then that can get cracked uh, in a refinery process to provide diesel, jet fuel, gasoline, any of those compounds. This bacterium, uh, you, 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 I, I've read your stuff, and you say it's the, the, like the granddaddy of all plants. This stuff is everywhere, right? Yes. It is one of the very first photosynthetic organisms that evolved, according to uh, most uh, scientists. And what these are, are bacteria that then went into what are now plant cells, and they became the chloroplast. So they became the photosynthetic engine of plants. So you can view these as uh, little chloroplasts, free living, uh, that are very efficient in photosynthesis. They don't have all the other stuff around it that needs to be made. I indeed, uh, leaves, roots, stems, these sorts of things. Um, very efficient, but you need to genetically kind of tinker around a little bit to make it more efficient for this purpose, correct? That's correct. How much, how much is involved there? Um, it is a matter of cutting out a few genes that code for uh, proteins that uh, make the surface of the cell uh, so that it's more easy to secrete fatty acids from the cells. You need to uh, put more of the photosynthate, more of the fixed CO2 into fatty acids. So that means that you shouldn't be making as much sugar that, as they okay. usually do. So you need to do something to the uh, carbon pathways, the uh, metabolic pathways to make fatty acids rather than other materials. So you've got, you've got the bacterium and then you've got the fatty acids that come from the bacterium and then you convert the fatty acids to some sort of fuel that will hopefully get us to something different than where we are now. The process, the harvesting of these fatty, we'll start with the fatty acids, the harvesting, something, what's involved here? What you make is essentially soap scum. Fatty acids, think of it as soap, right? That's what the nature of soap is, <laughs> primarily. So you get very, ugly layer on top of the aqueous phase that you need to take out without fouling up everything around it. So our idea is, and that needs to be uh, researched in a little more detail, is to have a organic phase on top of the water into which the fatty acids diffuse and then that you take and take the fatty acids out from. So it is uh, still a bit of not only a molecular uh, engineering effort, but also a chemical engineering effort to take the fatty acids, then isolate them, and then process them into fuel. How are they processed into fuel? What's that uh, process, what's involved there? 
Yeah, so from fatty acids to fuel, it is a process called uh, Sentia, and it has been developed by our collaborators at North, Car uh, North Carolina State University. And what that involves is first you take off the end, the charged end from the fatty acid, the carboxyl uh, group as they call it. What you end up with is a long carbon chain and then that you further process to make shorter uh, carbon chains out of it, branch it, make cyclic molecules. And that's a regular process now that they have developed over the past couple of years. So that will be mostly done out of a state in, okay. Okay. North, in North Carolina. Gotcha. L let's get back to more my level of understanding. Does okay. it take a big building? Does it take a lot of, a lot of stuff? Um, Depends on the scale, yeah. right? Right now, uh, we are at the level that we are at the proof of concept. We now need to optimize. And then when it is optimized, it will eventually be scaled up. The purpose of the current grant, is for, which is for two years, is to do that optimization process and to show companies, yeah, we can actually do it. And then in the private sector, it can be uh, uh, further scaled, scaled up. We've heard about algae, and here at Arizona State University, there's a lot of research being done with algae. Compare and contrast this with the idea of algae as biofuel. Uh, algae will use the same photosynthesis process, but they make initially sugars. And then in a uh, process of, well, that is induced by stresses that you put on the algae, they get converted into lipids. So you have a CO2 to sugar to lipid process, and the lipid usually stays inside the cells and is, you know, 30, 40 percent of the dry weight of the cell. The rest is other material. So then what you have to do is break open the algae and isolate your lipids convert those into fuel, and whatever you do with the rest of the algae, that's a big question. Um, it has value, but it right. needs to be re refined. In this case, in our case, what we are doing is say, we don't really want a lot of biomass growth. We don't want to have a huge amount of biomass that is continuing to grow. We have a lot of biomass that is continuing to produce fatty acids. In that way, you're much more efficient in converting solar energy into your product. You don't need to have the alga grow all that biomass. Real quickly, not much time. Can this solve this country's fuel needs? In principle, yes. Uh, the big question is at what cost? So it will depend pretty much on what the engineering people can come up with to minimize the production cost of the cyanobacterial fatty acid production system. All right, we got, we got to stop you right there. This is fascinating stuff. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you for the invitation. You bet.